Good morning. Good morning. Let's try it one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We're very glad that you're here on this first Sunday in Advent. Uh, whether you are uh, here in person or on the live stream, we pray, pray that you're blessed. Uh, this worship would be uh, a blessing on your relationship with God. I'm asked that you please stand and join us in song. Oh 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we come into the presence of the Lord on this first Sunday in the season of Advent, a time of preparing our hearts not only to celebrate once again the birth of Jesus for us and for our salvation, but to also look forward to his second coming when he will perfectly restore all things. As we come into the presence of this restorer, this deliverer, this savior, it is only appropriate for us to be honest with God, with ourselves, and with one another. And so I invite you to join me as we confess our sins to God, asking for his forgiveness. Lord God, we are blessed with your love and salvation, but we do not always live as your people. We turn away from your word and ways to follow our own selfish desires. We listen to the temptations of the world around us. We do not share with others the blessings we have received. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, God the Father has had mercy upon us. He sent his son, Jesus, as the blessing for the nations. He sent Jesus into this world to atone for the sins of the entire world. And based on what Jesus Christ has done, I announce to you that your sins are indeed forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Let us pray. Lord and Savior, Abraham believed your promise, and his faith was counted as righteousness. Through faith in your name, we too are counted righteous. Through your suffering, death, and resurrection, we have received the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation. O holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. We pray that the Holy Spirit will work through our acts of love and our words of witness so that others will come to know and worship you as Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue our worship service with the lighting of the first candle of the Advent wreath. And we light the first candle of this Advent wreath as we rejoice in the blessings that God has come to us through the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God told Abraham that through one of his descendants, all the families of the earth would be blessed. Holy child of Bethlehem, you were born among us to live and die and rise in fulfillment of God's promise to bless all nations. The promised descendant of Abraham is Jesus Christ. He is a blessing for people of all nations who trust in him for salvation. So then those who are of faith are blessed, along with Abraham, the man of faith. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Through faith in your name, Lord Jesus, we have the blessings of forgiveness and salvation. And we sing. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be comes to us today from the 12th chapter of Genesis, beginning at the first verse. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, 
And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. gospel for today is recorded in Luke's gospel, the first chapter, beginning at the 39th verse. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, "'Blessed are you among women!' And blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. 
And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. This is the gospel of the Lord. At this time, we invite the children to come forward for the children's message presented by one of our directors of Christian education, Mr. Chase Strait. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all today? Did y'all have a good Thanksgiving? That is good. Well, now that Thanksgiving's over, did you know we have another holiday coming up? Christmas. Yeah, do you guys like Christmas? Yeah. Some of you really like Christmas. What do you guys like about Christmas? What are some of the things you like? You like presents. Good. Okay, presents are good. I like that Jesus was born. That Jesus was born. I like that one too. I like making cookies. Making cookies? Oh, yeah. Um, sharing time with your family. Sharing time with your family. That's good too. Presents. presents, yeah. Oh. Being, thankful. Being thankful. Yeah. Last one, Mr. Owen. Making the Christmas tree. Making the Christmas tree. Decorating the Christmas tree. That's good too. Well, Today, I heard somebody say presents, and so I brought a present with me. Yeah, presents. And this is one of the best presents ever. It actually is the best present ever. Does anybody know what might be in here? What do you think? Ooh, Jesus love. That's not what I, ha well, not what I have in here, but you're really close. No, there is something in here, I promise. I have... A baby! Does anybody know why I have a baby in this box? Because, no. right, Christmas is when Jesus was born. That's when we remember and celebrate that Jesus was born. And you know what? Did you guys know Jesus is a gift? Jesus was a gift to the whole world because he came to earth to die for all of our sins. So at Christmas, we celebrate that Jesus came to be our Savior. He came for the whole world, but he also came for every single one of you. Jesus came for every single one, all of us. And he gives us so many good gifts. He is the best gift ever. And we're so blessed because Jesus came. And you know what? We get to share those blessings. So this Christmas, I want you to remember that Jesus is the best gift ever. And that he gives us so many good gifts that we get to share with the world. Why don't we put our hands together and why don't we thank Jesus for coming and ask for his help to share his loves. Can you say, Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to earth to save us and all of your good gifts. Help us share them with the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Good listeners, thank you, Chase. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. This certainly is a time of rejoicing. I mean, you see it with the, the tree that's set up, the tree in the back. It's that time of year where joy just seems to bubble out of us and around the, the world around us. It is a time of celebrating the fact that something happened in the past that really does change our todays and our tomorrows and our eternity. And it's all focused on that gift that Chase was talking about, the gift of God in the baby Jesus. 
A few weeks ago, actually, it wasn't a week, a few weeks ago, it was a little while ago, my son and my daughter-in-law attended a, a Texas A&M Aggie football game. And the stadium was packed. I was watching on TV, kind of seeing if I could, uh, could uh, find them in the crowd. And so I texted my son. I said, Daniel, I think I see you. Are you the one wearing maroon? You know, if you've ever been to an Aggie game, you know, it's a sea of maroon. It was kind of like those old Waldo books, Where's Waldo? I was trying to find a person in a vast crowd can at times be difficult. But the truth is, that's kind of what life is like sometimes. Where a person in the midst of all the crowd, where a person in the midst of all of humanity. And at times when you think about it, it can make you feel pretty small. I don't know about you, but there have been times uh, when I've been out at night and, and I look up and I see the stars. And you can feel really insignificant as you look up at the stars in the heavens and, and consider all the galaxies that God has made and that we're just one little planet in everything that God has made. And again, it can make you feel pretty small because we're just one in a vast array of things that God has created. And we're just one in the vast array of, vast array of humanity. I Googled this before the sermon today because I was just kind of curious what the world's population was. And this is based on 2021 numbers. But there are almost 8 billion people in the world today. And when you think of all those people, it's kind of easy to get lost. Here's the good news. God is a master at finding the one in the midst of the many. God is a master of finding that person that needs him. Because he loves that person and he meets them where they are so that he can take them to a place that they could never go apart from his grace. In fact, if you think about it, the whole history of God and humanity as recorded for us in the Bible is all about God being really, really good at finding the person who needs him. And that's what our first reading was about. Jack read it from Genesis chapter 12. It is God finding a person among all the tribes of people out of all the nations. He finds one guy named Abram. And he promises to bless Abram. And not only to bless Abram, but that through Abram's life, the entire world, including you and me, would be blessed through him. No, that's what God said he was going to do, and that's exactly what God did. Because he always keeps his promises. Now, some people think that Abraham's blessing of the nations is actually fulfilled by his impact on the world's religions. I mean, there, there are three great world religions. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And all three of these world religions call themselves Abrahamic religions because we recognize Abraham's role as very significant in our life of faith. For Christians, however, Abraham's blessing goes a lot further than just being the person from which it all started in Genesis chapter 12. We believe, because the scripture teaches us this, that God blessed Abraham so that through Abraham he could establish a nation, the nation of Israel. And we believe, because the Bible teaches us, that through the nation of Israel, one person came into this world that would change everything. And that is the Messiah, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We believe that when God first blessed Abram in Genesis chapter 12. 
He already had in mind to bless you, to bless me, to bless all the peoples of the world through Abraham. And that's the way God often works. He works in a very personal way on a one-to-one basis, but it has implications in a very universal way that we're blessed, not just to be blessed ourselves, but to become blessings to others. Jack read in our first lesson this promise, I, and the I is God, will make you, Abram, a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I've already said that we live in a world of many, eight billion in fact. Centuries ago, there was a playwright named Thornton Wilder who wrote a play called Our Town. It's actually made a resurgence today. It's pretty popular on, on Broadway. But in Our Town, there is this prophetic recognizing of how a person can get lost when surrounded by so many. Wilder has one of his characters, a, a woman named Rebecca, recall a letter to her friend, Jane. And on the outside of the envelope is the address to Jane. Listen to what it said. It was addressed to Jane Crowfoot, the Crowfoot Farm, Grover's Corners, Sutton County, New Hampshire, United States of America, continent of North America, Western Hemisphere, the Earth, the solar system, the universe, the mind, of God. And you can picture in the play as this address is being read that Jane Crowfoot is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and less and less significant. That's the challenge of being one in a world of many. Now, let, let's be honest. There's also a, a great blessing about being one in a world of many. For example, a month ago, the Houston Astros won the World Series. And what did people do after that? They flooded the streets. Whether you were at the game or not, people went out and they flooded the streets and they went to the academies and they were surrounded by people cheering a victory. That's something cool about that. That's why we love to go to games and, and the things like that because there's power and energy with many that's especially a blessing when the power and the excitement and the energy of many are pointing us to the most important thing in life. That is our relationship with the one who has created us, the one who has redeemed us, the one who has sanctified us, and that is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By the way, in case you didn't know, that's what church is about. We gather together with other people, not only to celebrate as a group, but to help encourage one another within the group to focus our eyes on Jesus, to allow Jesus to have his way with us individually as well as corporately the body of Christ known as Epiphany Lutheran Church. That's the way God's call often works. He contacts an individual so that that individual can touch other people's lives. It's very personal, but its goal is collective. It is to reach more and more people. That's the way the gospel works. It works one person at a time. God coming to you personally to touch your life, to forgive your sins, to strengthen your faith, and then to empower you to go and live this new life that he's given you so that other people might come to know him. That is the, the way the gospel works. God coming to us so that we can take it to other people. The problem of living in this world is that there are so many other voices. There are so many other distractions that at times we forget what life is truly all about. Again, that's why we need one another. There's an interesting Renaissance painting called The Census of Bethlehem. It was written in 1566 by uh, a painter, Peter Bruegel. 
And what he did in 1566 is he took the Christmas story and the taxation and he applied it to his life in 1566. And if you've ever seen the painting, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. You look at that painting and you'll see ice skaters. You'll see kids having snowball fights. You'll see other children sledding on the ice. You'll see some adults making sausage. You'll see a makeshift pub. In the background, there's a crumbling castle. In the foreground, there's a well-kept church. And there's this long, long line of people waiting to pay their taxes. And if you look at all the stuff that's going on in the picture, and if you look closely, you will see that in one part of the painting, there's this woman who's expecting a child riding on a donkey accompanied by what is supposedly her husband. She rides this donkey into the city. And there's the cow in the painting that's looking right at the person who's looking at the picture. And the cow is almost saying, are you paying attention? In the midst of everything else that goes on in life, there's one thing that's most important, but the problem is it's like, where's Waldo? It's like trying to find my son at an Aggie football game. It can often be overlooked that Mary came into town bearing a child in order to save the world through her child. In the next few weeks, it's going to get really crazy. It's going to get crazy at church. We have extra services. We have extra events. It's going to be crazy at school. It's going to be crazy at work. Because this is a busy, busy time of year. But in the busyness, I pray that you're not going to forget that you're not just lost among the masses. The whole idea of Christmas is about you. That everything Jesus did from his incarnation, his birth, to his suffering, his death, and his resurrection was all done for you personally because he knows what's going on in your life and he loves you. And he's come to you personally so that he can also use you to share his love with other people. Martin Luther wrote a sermon on Christmas Day and listen to what he said about how important it is to make the Christmas story our own. He says, the gospel does not merely teach about the history of Christ. No. It enables all who believe to receive Christ's life as their own, which is the way that the gospel op operates. And Luther says, what benefit would it be to me if Christ had been born a thousand times? And it would daily be sung into my ears in the most lovely manner if I were never to hear that he was born for me and was to be my very own. That's what the Christmas message is about. And that's what this series that we're going to be focusing on for the next four Sundays is all about. A child has been born to us. And we'll be focusing on that great hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and our prayer is the prayer that is said at the close of this song. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. If you're feeling lost in the crowd, if you're feeling minimized as if you disappeared and no one would ever notice, know that there is someone who always takes notice of you, and that is Jesus Christ. And he comes into this world to meet you where you are, to bind up your hearts, to give you healing and joy and blessing so that even as you are blessed, you can go forth and be a blessing to others as you point other people to the hope that will never disappoint, the hope that is given to us in Jesus our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please rise. I invite you to join me as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son into this world to be the Savior. And it's true, as John's Gospel tells us, that God so loved the world, and we celebrate that truth. But it's also true that God loves us personally. And we pray, Lord, that the good news of your love would sink deep into our hearts, and that we would not be lost in this vast, faceless humanity, but that we would know how much you care for each one of us personally. That you've come to bless us individually so that we not only are blessed, but we can be a blessing to other people. Help us to celebrate that you love all people and to celebrate that you love me and that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Lord, when I feel like I am all alone, when I feel as if I could disappear and no one would even ever notice it, remind me that you are always looking upon your child and you love me with a love that will never end, even as you love all people with that eternal love given to us in Jesus Christ. Lord, we come before you because this is a dark world, but you've come to shine the light of your love into the darkness. Sometimes the darkness is caused because of physical maladies. At other times it's because of spiritual darkness. At other times it's because of broken relationships or, or emotional issues. We pause this morning to lift up people to your throne of grace, asking that you bring healing, whatever that healing looks like. Specifically, we pray for Wayne Roberson, Al Lentz, Waddell Heinrich, Mary Andrews, Linda Shapey, Janet Williamson, Teddy Triplett, Tom Holt, Jane Wiley, Joyce Schneider, Inez Wright, Tim Schroeder, Arlene Gumbiner, Larry Wolfel, Evelyn, Teresa Sperling, Mike Schroeder, Ronnie McLaughlin, Betsy Kirk, and Marlene Heinrich. We commit them to your care and to your blessing, asking that your will is done in their lives. Lord, we offer up a prayer of sympathy for the family of Jennifer Moore, Lynn Meyer's friend, whom you called to yourself this past week. We thank you for Jennifer's life, but we rejoice in the fact that her life is not over because of her Savior, Jesus Christ, who now uses death as a door to pass through so that we can experience life more abundantly through a relationship with our living Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you'll comfort those who grieve with the truth that death does not win, Jesus does. And because of that, we have hope now and we have life that will never end. Lord, we pray for our country and for those who govern. We pray for those who keep us safe. We pray for the men and women of the military, and we thank you for their service. We ask that you would watch over their bodies and their souls. Specifically, we pray for Eric Anderson, Pierce Castro, Robert Craven, Ethan Ensign, Brian G., Ashton Hall, Fred Hare, Michael Helton, Jason Lund, Dale Maru, John Mutchler, Ryan Pontifice, Kyle Rogers, 
Chaplain Ryan Roop, Ryan Steglich, Nathan Smith, Antron Stevens, Jeremy Foster, Micah Wright, Peyton Soderstrom, and John Hardy. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. In just a moment, we're going to invite you to come forward to receive uh, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For those who would like to use the, the individual communion kits that have both the wine and the wafer in one little container, it's right here uh, in, on this tray in the center. Please come forward and get that if you want to use this kit, and then just line up with the rest of the people who uh, will be communing with you. Peel off the bottom first to get the wafer out, and then the, the peel off the top for the communion wine. For those of you who would like us to give you the body and blood of Christ, uh, the elder and myself will be there to give you the host and also the wine. Welcome to the Lord's table.
Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled to serve you constantly. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before we conclude with the, the blessing and the last song, I would like to call several announcements to your attention. There's a lot going on in December, just like there's a lot going on in the whole world in December, but it's also true for church. So buckle up your seatbelts and get ready. And if you'll start the first uh, video announcement. So Light Fest is just around the corner. It is a week from Saturday. Um, in terms of Light Fest, a lot of people are needed in order to carry it off. So uh, volunteers are still needed, and help is also needed to hang lights. Uh, there's going to be a group of people hanging lights today after the service. It's a beautiful day for it. If you have some time, uh, you can come out and help after the service. Also, uh, associated with Light Fest, on the Welcome Center, there should be a stack of uh, invites. One side of it is an invitation to Light Fest, which will be again a week from Saturday. But on the other side, it's an invite to our worship services on Christmas Eve. We have the, the services that are listed. And our goal is to invite people to come experience the love of God through us. And so we hope that you'll consider taking some of those cards and passing them out. Also, as it is the Advent season, uh, we have some extra opportunities to come into the presence of the Lord and just to escape from the craziness of the world and sit at his feet. We have midweek Advent services. And this year, we'll have two on Wednesday, for the next three Wednesdays. The first one will be at 4.30. That's not a surprise. We've been doing that for a while. The second service is at 6.30. That's the first time we've ever had at that, at that time slot. If you come at 7.00, you're going to be well through missing the service because um, that's how we've always done it in the past at 7 o'clock. But this year we're making it a little bit earlier so there's not as much uh, time lag in between the services. Plus, people can get home a little bit earlier. So 4.30 and 6.30, we'll be focusing on uh, the Advent season uh, in these worship services. They take about, where our goal is about 45 minutes or so. And in between the two services, we also have Advent dinners, and they will be served from four, uh, 5.15 to 6.15. Next Sunday, we will have the Youth and Children's Christmas Play. Twas the evening of Christmas. That'll be here in the, uh, in the AFLC at 10.30. Because of that, Bible class today and Bible class next Sunday, the adult class, is next door in the sanctuary so that they can practice and rehearse for the Christmas play. And then, finally, in the back you'll see a, a Christmas tree lit up. That's our giving tree. We have one next door as well. Uh, the truth is there are some people who would not have anything to open unless someone else was gracious and generous to give them a gift. 
we as the people of God have every reason to be gracious and generous because of how gracious and generous God has been to us through his son, Jesus Christ. So if you are moved, uh, we would uh, encourage you to take a, a name and what that child would like for Christmas. Take, uh, go and buy it and then bring it back here so that we can get that to them in plenty of time. Um, all the gifts this year are going to the Buckner Family of Faith. And they, that is a ministry that is a connected with Star of Hope. We are familiar with the Star of Hope ministry here in the Houston area. And so all of those gifts will be going to uh, children who have gone through some difficult times or are currently in difficult times, and we have a chance to make their day a little brighter and certainly their Christmas a little happier. With that, uh, please rise. And one last announcement before we do the blessing. Um, after the last song, if you wouldn't mind taking your chair and taking it to the racks. Uh, many hands make for light work, and so if you could help clean up afterwards, uh, just taking down the chairs and the tables, we would surely appreciate that. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
serve the Lord and let your life be a thank offering to God for everything he has done for you through Jesus Christ, your Savior. Have a great day in our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Live your voices here.